Uh, here's an optimization I just performed. Um, I have this rod fixed on one end. There's an axial load that's pulling the rod in the positive x direction. Here are the axial stresses I originally had. I had about 50, oh, I forgot what units I'm using. I think it was 50 pascals. So here I have an axial stress of 50,000 50, pascals to be, or 50 megapascals at the beginning of my design. After I've created my design variable, my design constraint, my design constraint said, don't go beyond 110,000 megapascals. After my optimization, I find out that my axial stress is now 31,000 gigapascals. So it, for some reason, has gone beyond the design constraint. And in this video, we're going to walk through the process of validating that we properly defined our design constraints. So here, let's go ahead and uh, get started. Here's my F06 file. And again, the problem at hand is that my the, the optimized model is producing a stress beyond the design constraint. So what exactly is going on here? Let's go back to the original design model. And we're going to augment this design model so we can start inspecting the model and making sure things uh, look uh, proper in there. So let's go ahead and do that now. The first thing I'll do is, by default, this template or this optimization example is set to run for at most 40 design cycles. I'm just going to make that 40 a zero. So let's go ahead and zoom in. I'm gonna just delete that zero or four. So now it's just going to, going to perform one design cycle, if you will, or it's just going to perform the initial analysis. Now let's go ahead and enter the special command called dscreen. And let's go ahead and type in stress and type in a negative 1000. And I'll explain what this means in a moment. And let's go ahead and run this optimization example. And then one thing I'll point out right now, this is an important step that you should perform before taking on a larger optimization example. And hopefully by the end of this video, you will understand why. And as always, my name is Christian. Here's my email address. You are more than welcome to reach out to me with questions regarding optimization. And I would be more than glad to support you in performing optimization of your own. Here, let's take a look at this F06 file. And let's look at some of the output. So here at the very beginning, we get the initial analysis uh, output. And you'll notice here that the section regarding design constraints on the responses is not there. It's as if it's not taking into account the design constraints at all. Uh, here, I'll just to quickly show you what I mean. Here we get information regarding the objective. We started at a mass of 5.3 kilograms. Our design variable started at a radius cross section of 0 0.025. The design property has a, a value of 0 0.025. Some other values regarding the beam is available here. Uh, limits on the properties are available here. Here, there's usually a section devoted to design constraints, and that's not present there. Then we get a summary of the responses. So here we get the actual value of the objective, 5.3 kilograms. And then after that, it proceeds on to the first design cycle, where we see the same, or rather, almost the same information available. But now let's look at the new F06 file we've created. And you'll find out there's some additional 
information in this F06 file. And we are going to look at the summary of the initial analysis now. So first things first, you'll see that there is only one summary, and that's for the initial analysis. If you scroll any further, you don't see a summary for design cycle one. The reason that happened back in the design model, we specified des max of zero. So it said, don't go beyond the first initial analysis. In the original model, it had des max equal to 40. So here it not only did the initial analysis, but it went through design cycle two and all the other design cycles after that. So here we didn't want to uh, have the optimizer optimize the whole model. We just wanted to stop at the first analysis just so we can inspect and make sure our design constraints are properly set up. So now let's look at this information in more detail. Here on the right, we see the design objective, the design variables, the design properties. But now we see this new section called design constraints on responses. MSC Nastram will normalize all of your constraints. I have a separate video on that. I'll look through my YouTube channel for that video. Out of all of these normalized constraints, there might be a hundred, a thousand, a million. Through each design cycle, MSC Nastram will select the most important constraints. It will retain those constraints. It will say, okay, these are the constraints that are the most troublesome. These are the constraints I have to watch out for when I adjust the design variables. Here on the left, that section was not present, indicating that MC Nastran did not retain any of the design constraints. So there is an issue there. Here on the right, I've prompted the output of all the design constraints. And the way you do that is by saying, screen stress, keep everything with the design constraint value greater than negative 1000 point, and keep up to 100,000 design constraints. Here on the right, it's done that. I get a summary of all the design constraints that are retained. All of these constraints have a value greater than negative 10,000 as indicated by the D screen entry. So here negative 10,000, it's kept everything greater than that. You'll notice that the value for all of these constraints is negative one. So this is indicating that for some reason, all my values are the same and it's producing the same normalized constraint. Let's go ahead and look at the internal ID column. So that would be this column here. We're going to refer to response two, three, four, five, and so on and so on. There's another section called responses in the model. Trace the numbers here, two, three, four, to the values here. Here, this is where I find the values 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. Again, this is not available in the original F06 file. Again, because MSC Nashan will screen certain constraints. And here, since it found that these constraints really have no impact on the design model, I can effectively ignore these constraints. And here it goes through the optimization, almost ignoring these constraints. After prompting with the D screen entry, I now get to look at the constraint values and really inspect and see what's going on here. So after looking at the normalized constraint values, finding out that they're all the same value of negative one, this is telling me that the actual stress is the same for each element, which is really odd. Let's go ahead and see if we can figure out why. When I look at the responses in the design model, the stress responses for element one through 10, the axial stress is zero pascals. Now that's really odd. This is a model that's definitely being loaded. Here, 
I originally had an actual stress of 51 pascals, and for some reason I'm getting zero pascals in my F06 file. This is usually indication that there might be an issue with the way I configured my design constraints. So let's go ahead and inspect this. P bar 2, 1. So here the design constraint is being applied to any element associated with P bar 1. So that would be elements 1 through 10. And it's referencing the second item code. Let's go ahead and jump back to the quick reference guide and see if we can track down what's going on there. So here's our MSC Nashram quick reference guide. We're looking at the stress item codes for C bar elements. We were using an item code of two, and this is really odd because this corresponds to the stress at point C of the cross section at N A. But this isn't the actual stress. This is actually corresponding to a bending stress at point C of the cross section. What I should have used is element or item code six, which corresponds to the actual stress. Here, by using item code two, which is a bending stress, and given the fact that this beam is not being loaded to produce beam stresses, that is why I'm getting beam stresses of zero here in the F06 file. Let's go ahead and make the adjustment in the model. So I'll take my web app and instead of two, let's go ahead and use the correct item code of six. And then let's take these statements and use them in my design model. So I'll be here and let's go ahead and replace these statements with the new one. Again, the issue was with the item code. I originally made an error that cascaded down to the point where the optimization wasn't even considering the right design constraints. And hopefully now you understand the importance of performing this check. Let's go ahead and run this optimization example. Uh, while that's happening, let me point out another detail. You'll want to go ahead and change the des max back to 40. Here I left it at zero, so this optimization won't go through successfully. Let's go ahead and delete these files and try this again. Let's go ahead and run MSC Nastron again. And while that's happening, I like to point out this is one piece of more thorough and advanced training I provide for MSC Nastron optimization. You are more than welcome to reach out to me for support. I'm more than glad to partner with you on performing an optimization example of your own. Um, it can be something very small to something very complex. And here's my email address again. Definitely reach out to me if you have a question. And right now, let's go ahead and look at our F06 file. The optimization is still happening, but enough has happened where I can look at the summary for the initial analysis. So here I am. Remember that before, the values for the actual stress were being reported at zero. We found out that I was using the wrong item code here in the design constraint. By using item code two, it was pointing to a bending stress. Since the model is not loaded for bending, I was receiving values of zero, and it was those values MSC Nashron was using for the optimization process. And that's what led to this unusual result where I still had an actual stress value of 31,000 uh, gigapascals. But now after I fix the issue, I'm using the correct item code of six. I am now getting non-zero actual stress values. Here I'm getting 51,000 pascals. You'll see that these values of 51,000 pascals or 5E7 
or corresponding to the actual stress values that I can see in my pre-post-processor pattern. So here I've confirmed that I finally am using the right constraint values for optimization. And if I look at the very end, I just want to make sure that I have this message run terminated due to hard convergence. Perfect. So now let's go ahead and attach the new XDB results. It could be a master file, it could be an OP2 file in your case. The new result files have both the initial results and the final design results. So now what I can do is refer to those results and make sure that the actual stress is under what I intended it to have. So here, let's go ahead and look at that. So here, the initial actual stress values and let's go ahead and take a look at the final design stress values. Perfect. So now we are at an axial stress value of 110 megapascals, which honors the design constraint I originally intended. So now the model is properly configured. It's performed the optimization. I can now view the updated design variables. And again, this is a procedure I recommend doing. Uh, one, use D screen stress, negative 1000 and 1000 if you're dealing with stress. If you're dealing with displacements, you would type in D screen disp. And you would say keep everything with the, mat, uh, with the normalized constraint value greater than 1000 and keep up to 1000 constraints. The normalized constraint value again will uh, be referring to the section design constraints or responses. It would be referring to the value column. These are normalized constraints, by the way, and it would keep up to a hundred thousand constraints. So, with that, that's the end of this video. Feel free to send me an email if you have any questions, comments. Uh, if you want to go through this example um, a little faster, a little slower with me in person, I'd be more than glad to do that with you too. With that, that's the end of the video. And as always, thank you for watching.